All right, class, this is Chris Dunaway again with the LSU Ag Center, and today we're going to be talking about growing our citrus orchard, and we're going to be talking about maintaining the plants through fertilization and watering. Both of these um, are very important, but one of the things when we're talking about fertilization, we always say take a soil test. It says don't guess soil test for a reason, because we really don't know what nutrients are available in the soil for the plants, and there's really no reason to be adding a whole lot of uh, extra inputs of fertilizer if the soil and the tree doesn't need them. In fact, it could be detrimental to the environment if you keep adding fertilizer in areas where it's not needed. So by taking the soil test, you do learn the right combination of fertilizer, the sulfur, lime, or other ingredients that your soil will need and the plants need to grow properly. So we'd, you, uh, for more information, you, you can actually, we're gonna have a link to a video that Dr. Joe did showing you exactly how to take a soil test. So check that out in the uh, resources section. So like we say, do a soil test prior to planting and you do wanna retest about every two to three years. I've got this fancy pointer here. So two to three years for the most accurate data. What's happening is that even if you do make some adjustments to the soil with um, either lime or sulfur, it takes a long time for that to break down and make changes anyway. So there's really no reason to um, check more frequently than that. And also the changes that you make with the soil just don't, don't happen that fast. So two to three years is really good for um, taking the soil test. You do want to follow the soil test recommendations. So mainly you're checking for phosphorus and potassium and some of the other micronutrients. Uh, typically here in the New Orleans area, we have a lot of phosphorus and potassium already in the soil. So check that out and make sure you follow those recommendations. And the pH is important. The pH, as we've learned in our um, other gardening class, when we're talking about fertilizer, pH is super important in what nutrients are available. So at the, just the right pH, the, uh, the nutrients are available, or in some cases, less available if that's what the plant needs. So the pH is important, and if you're going to adjust the pH, the best time to do it is before you plant any trees that you put in. Um, so do the t soil test before you plant your tree, and then if you are maintaining it later, you can, um, you can still adjust the pH, but part of the problem with changing pH is that it's best to incorporate the lime or sulfur into the soil. So unless you're actually stirring up the soil in the future, it's, it's not gonna be as effective or work as fast. So if you can do it, do it before you plant. So here's a general rule. This is if you look at the um, citrus growing guide. This, is, this chart is in here. And what they're saying is generally, they're, they're, they put the uh, fertilizer, they tell you when to plant it. So right here, the, the year of the tree, uh, age of the tree. So at the year of transplanting, you want to wait about six weeks after transplanting. And you're going to use a half a pound of triple eight or triple 13. Now this is a general recommendation. This is, if you haven't taken a soil test, then you would use a complete fertilizer with all three of the macro ingredients in it. But if you have taken the soil test, chances are you're gonna be using something different than this. But again, that'll show up in the recommendations from the soil, uh, from the lab. Then in the first year, you're gonna be, gonna be fertilizing in late January to early February, and you're gonna use one and a half pounds of fertilizer. And then the second year, you're gonna use two to three pounds and so on. One to one and a half pounds of fertilizer per year is, is the increase. This is a, a general thing, is that one pint of triple 13 fertilizer equals one pound. So if you don't have a scale, you can actually just use your, your, your scooper. If you have a pint scooper, you'll know that that's gonna be a pound, so you'll know how much to put out. Now, this table, I should point out, is actually the, the, the early season fertilization. So again, this is going to be done early in the year, late January, early February. But you do want to come back in the summer with a little bit of nitrogen, just to give it a boost. And you're going to do that in late May or June. 
But you don't really need to do that until the tree is about four years old, and so on. But you're going to put a pound of, of the nitrogen source fertilizer, then a half, one and a half quarter pounds, and so on. It's not very much, just enough to give it that, because um, if you don't know, citrus trees have basically two flushes of leaves. They will have an early spring flush, and then later on in the summer, they will have a second flush of nice, healthy green leaves. And that's what you're trying to feed and make sure the plant has enough nutrient for, is that second flush. So when you want to do your fertilization, you're going to broadcast the fertilizer beyond the spread of the limbs where most of the feeder roots occur. So if you think of a tree, I'm a tree, and my roots are down here at my feet, and these are my branches sticking out. Well, my, my roots actually extend under the ground all the way to the edge of where my arms are and a little bit beyond. So that's where all those feeder roots are. Everything closer to my, me and my trunk are mainly there for support. They're just holding me in place and keeping me from falling over while these other tender, juicy roots out here are the ones picking it up. So there's no reason to put fertilizer right here. In fact, all you're doing is going to encourage weeds to grow here. So you want to put it out here where I can get it. And so what you kind of a general rule is what you want to do is put your left shoulder near the outer branches of the tree. So let's pretend that the screen here is the outer branch. So I'm going to put my left shoulder here. So these branches are, are coming right here. And I want to take my little cup of fertilizer and I've measured out how much I need. So say this is a, a, a two year old tree. Let's say it's a two year old tree. This is the first fertilization. So I'm going to need about two and a half pounds of triple eight fertilizer. So I've got my two and a half pounds of triple eight fertilizer. I'll probably divide that into two sections so that I know how to put it out. And then I'm going to divide the tree in half. I'll put my shoulder here. I'll take my cup. And I'll start walking around and I'm going to spread it just in front of myself and a little bit under the branches and go all the way around the tree. You're basically pouring a inner tube type circle around the, uh, the, around the trunk of the tree, just underneath the branches. So you walk around and evenly fertilize in about a 12 to 18 inch brand. That's what I was talking about. This technique will ensure the fertilizer is placed a proper distance from the tree at, for maximum utilization. You can get special citrus fertilizer, but that is not necessary. Um, I'm going to have to write an article about marketing and fertilizer. It, just because something, <laughs> fertilizers, are named different things depending on what you're going to put them on, but they all have the same ingredients, just maybe in different um, ratios. So just a lot of times you can just go to your feed store and just ask them for the, the mix you need, and they will be able to sell it to you in bulk. Just they write them out. You can use organic fertilizer, uh, as, but you have to make sure that they still meet those uh, requirements. You know, they, just not all organic, organic fertilizers necessarily supply as much of those nutrients as some of these, um, these inorganic fertilizers, but you, certainly you can use them. We don't re really recommend fertilizer spikes. First of all, they're very small. There's not nearly enough. You would have to put out boxes and boxes of them to get the proper amount of fertilizer you need. The other thing is that they are just putting little dots of fertilizer here and there that, that isn't getting all of the roots. So if we've seen pictures of, of roots, then you, you know that they spread out very much like a spider web. They're, they're all over. They're not just in this spot, in this spot, in this spot. So using the broadcast method is much better for making sure that it's all evenly distributed. These spikes, by the way, can also create hot spots exactly in the space that they are, which could damage the roots. So do avoid fertilizing the trees after the end of June, because at that point, they've got the nutrition they need, theoretically, if you've already fertilized them. But you don't really want to have a lot of green, flesh, um, fresh growth on this tree as it approaches winter. So these, these trees are not, you're not trying to get green growth anymore. You're actually trying to get the tree to concentrate on getting that fruit set. So late and excessive fertilizer, again, will encourage vigorous growth and delay fruit maturity. 
and decrease cold hardiness. That's important. And if all this extensive green growth can just much more easily freeze if the winter does come and cause the death, uh, even in a moderate freeze, it could cause damage. So again, make sure you don't fertilize past that June mark. Irrigation. This, some, some people may think this is kind of a weird thing. You put a tree in the ground and you never water it. Most people just don't think of watering trees as something you need to do. It, they might think it silly in certain parts of the region. Uh, certainly a lot of us around here think we get plenty of water. That's not necessarily all the case. Um, however, you should know that if you're growing something in a container, anything that you grow in a container is always going to need fertilization. They will dry out so fast. And also, the gravity pulls it through. Uh, the wind will dry it out, especially if it's a, a porous material. So you're definitely going to water those trees. But even in the ground, uh, you know, here, the average rainfall in Louisiana is 48 inches in the north uh, to 75 inches in the south. Rainfall occurs throughout the year with a predominantly wet season from April to September. And the dry season, we do have a dry season, <laughs> from October to March. So this is from the U.S. Weather Service. Research from the University of Arizona has found that mature citrus trees use about 60 inches of water per year. This varies with the citrus type. This corresponds to as much as 17 gallons of water per day in the winter and 135 gallons of water per day in the summer. So, long periods of drought may necessitate irrigation. So these trees need a continual supply of water, not just a periodic supply of water. This is especially true for young trees. So they're gonna be, have shallower roots, they're gonna be less likely to be able to get down into the, into the water table, into the soil water, so they have a less uh, easy time. Water only when the top six inches of soil is dry. So you don't need to, you, again, these trees like irrigation, they like uh, periods where they dry out to let that air exchange go down in the soil. So don't water until, again, the top six inches of soil, and then give it a nice deep watering. Don't just sprinkle it with a little bit of water. Give it a nice deep irrigation. It's preferable to shallow irrigation. So sometimes in that, that case, maybe you need to uh, put the hose on the, surface of the soil and just let it go on for a trickle. You want it to go out and sink in, not just run off. The soil type, tree age, and time of year determine irrigation frequency. That all, and also, with a, if it has fruit on it, irrigate the trunk, irrigate from the trunk of the tree just beyond the drip line. So here, again, that you're watering where the roots are. You, can't, you actually do want to water up near the trunk because you want to make sure that that water is evenly distributed, and you don't want any kind of a soil cracking or anything like that to dry out, have dry roots in between. So, but you don't really want to necessarily irrigate the trunk of the tree. You don't really need to have water spraying all over that trunk if you can avoid that. It's best to have the water go right down onto the soil. And leaf curling is a sign of water stress. So a lot of times if you see, if you get to that point and you start seeing the leaves curl up and it's not the, um, the citrus leaf miner, which is different, but an upward curling, you know you might need, to, uh, it's in water stress. Well, one important reason that it's super, super necessary to water your citrus trees is because if you get into the, one of these drought sessions and there's fruit is on the tree, you, you realize that a, an orange or something like that is mostly water. So as that fruit is developing, it needs a constant supply of water so that it grows evenly and, and regularly. What happens is if you don't have the water, the, there's, the fruit will, will can keep making the cells inside of the fruit. It will make all the cells, but they will be very um, empty, they have little moisture in them. So when that finally does come, when the rain does come or you irrigate the tree, all those cells fill up super rapidly. They fill up so rapidly that the skin can't stretch fast enough to keep up with it and you will get fruit split. So that happens all the time. And, and we know as soon as we see it, we know that the person just went through the late summer and didn't give it any water. So that's what happens. You really don't wanna, you really wanna make sure you avoid uh, that, that uh, 
underwatering. So this is a nice little chart. This is a table uh, from the University of Il Il um, Arizona. Illustrates watering frequency. So time after planting, so you have within a month, two to three months, four months to uh, up and three years and older, so on. But through December, and all the way, basically the entire year, you're going to water this tree every two to three days, if it's a month old. So this is how frequency, this is actually a really good chart for just about any freshly planted tree, is you want to keep that soil or root ball nice and moist, you know, let those roots develop and get into that soil. And as it gets a little older, you can pull it back to three to five days after three months, and then after four months, you can really cut it way back. In the summer, in the, in the winter, you go in every 14 days, and then so on. And then, of course, in the summer, you get, you know, you have to still water it every two to five days. And this is something that's in the ground. Again, if it's a container, you know, you might need to plant water it every day. In the super hot summer, you might need to water it twice a day. And then, of course, if you get to these older trees, you really can cut back the watering a lot. You just have to make sure, and, and again, this is all sources of water. So if it rains, you don't have to go out and water it in one of these periods. So some more recent irrigation research done at the University of Florida um, show that overall the use of soil amendments, particularly compost, is critical for improving water holding capacity. So, you know, we did a whole section on soil in our, our gardening class. I encourage you all to look that up and, and go into it. But yeah, you really want that organic material in the soil if you can get it. Um, this is why you really want to use a lot of a good mulch on top of the soil rather than growing plants and grass and things like that. Frequent irrigation practices, drip, and microjet irrigation systems are efficient and they're important for achieving rapid tree growth, root mass development, and high productivity. So again, they're using this, this nice, efficient methods of getting that water right onto the soil and not spraying it on the trunk, not spraying it into the canopy. This really helps keep disease and other problems down by just putting it right where it needs to be and not where it doesn't need to be. A citrus tree is a long-term investment planted with the desire to harvest sweet or sour <laughs> Juicy fruit on a regular basis for self-use and to share. That's the most fun for me. For best results, invest some time, energy, and resources on a regular basis to keep the tree healthy and thriving. There you go. Enjoy.